how do you honestly feel about repeating the same color combo in your collection? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Instead of letting your ego be at play and just make the problem worse and worse and worse, sometimes you gotta be the bigger person and just be the one who's like, okay, that's it. I dislike negativity. I dislike talking or gossiping about others because there's always two sides of the story. And the truth is always with the people involved. So it's really, really hard for a third person or other people to comment on what's going on because they don't know the whole story. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy, if you're new here. And we are doing a Q&A today. So these questions I got two weeks ago. Sorry for my delay in answering them. But let's get started with Amy Chen's question. Does your husband join you on Elmer shopping trips? I bring mine, he's better at chit-chatting. Um, good point, I used to bring him at the beginning of my journey, like my first year. Also because at the time my essay was male, so I felt like having my husband with me was just a little bit easier to like, not kill time, but you know, they chit-chat better. I just have less common topic with him. Um, yeah, I, I do feel like you're right that having my husband then, uh, when my essay was male, that it was, you know, it, I don't know if it was really helping my journey per se, because it didn't really make it a lot sl faster or easier or spend less. It wasn't like that, but it was definitely more kind of like a, on a connecting level, more kind of like a chit chatty level. Um, so that. I do agree and I did at the time but ever since my first essay left and then now my essay my current essay is female um I didn't feel like it was helping <laughs> anymore like not that it was not helping either but it was just uh didn't make any difference it was definitely more mm, I guess it's a different relationship you could say different individuals so now I don't really bring him anymore because uh also their schedules, meaning my essay schedules and his schedule are a lot more conflicting. Whereas with my first essay, um, it was more compatible because my husband's day off were the days that he used to work. So it worked out better, but now I don't anymore. <laughs> um, good question though. Miles DLT, what do you think of the trend Jane Jane Birkin knee-fying your bag. So I had to look up what that meant because I was like, what is that, right? Birkin knee-fying, <laughs> Jane Birkin knee-fying. Um, so apparently this trend, which I'll put a, I guess um, what I found on Google, is this trend where you kind of decorate your bags with a, an excessive amount of, of charms, which, I have didn't know about this trend and I don't even know what to think about this trend because I'm not really like a big bag charms person. I do own a few bag charms, but I'm very selective on how I buy them. First of all, I, I buy them usually either whether I associate a certain special event with the meaning of that charm or maybe if I find that my bag is a little bit plain, then I would try to find something to spice it up. So I have, what, four charms? <laughs> so I own a total of four charms right now and they all serve a very specific purpose, which is to decorate my bag. Um, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not really into the trend. So I guess I don't really like it. Like I, I don't see the, f the point of over decorating your bag that's sort of weird <laughs> nothing wrong with it if that's your thing it's just not my thing and i wouldn't do that i suppose and so yeah that's what i think of it it's a little strange and i feel like it's gonna be a trendy thing now and then it'll just pass again and it'll be on to something else but that explains why there are so many charms out there like many of the luxury companies are churning out so many different cute things to buy like basically useless ridiculous things to buy because they cost hundreds of dollars right 
if not thousands, depending on which which luxury house you're talking about. And yeah, it can get really addictive and you can spend a lot of money on these charms. Um, before you know it, you've spent a small fortune on them. So not into it. Uh, and even if you were not to use the luxury charms necessarily, uh, it's still not my jam. I don't know. It's not my thing. Kenfo2004, how long do you wait between your latest quota bag and asking for the next one? So I got this question multiple times. So in um, Canada, because I'm located in Vancouver, Canada, you're allowed one quota bag per year. So it's not the calendar year, it's just wherever your anniversary is. So let's say your offer is usually in September, then it's sort of like that 12 month period, you can get a second quota bag, right? Or your next quota bag. How long do I wait before I ask for one? I usually ask for the next one when I'm kind of close to my, I guess, racial spend. On average here in Vancouver, the expected, not that they say it out loud, but it's kind of the the average, I suppose, of what people spend is two or three to one. So two to one, three to one, basically. And so whenever I'm like at two to one or close to two to one, I'll start talking about my next wish bag, like brainstorming basically, right? And also usually that coincides with kind of closer to my anniversary date because that's when they, meaning my essays, uh, my essay and the, the boutique is able to sort of like allocate a next bag for you because they, they can't really allocate more than a bag per year for you. Even if it's like, a month early or whatever like sometimes it's earlier sometimes it's later than your anniversary but on average it kind of balances out um so yeah i usually wait until my spend is close to the two to one ratio uh or at and then um then I start talking about it because between that time and then when you actually get your bag, you're going to be spending a little bit more too. So I usually start around, ask around when I'm close to two to one and then I start asking about my bag or at least talk about it. Also from Kenfo, uh, 2004, how many more quota bags do you see yourself getting from the store? Um, at the moment, um, I just got my Constance, so that was my latest. At the moment, I foresee, or at least I, in my mind, I have one more that I really want. And that is just because I want a different colorway. So only one, uh, I mean, at least right now, right? I can only concentrate one at a time because you can't ask for more than one a year anyway. So right now I'm focusing on my next one. So I will say f even, even because, uh, you know, in my, um collection right now i have the b I have the k the c and i have the mini k so i really have all of what i want already even the sizes that i want those are really the ones that i really want in my collection so i only really want another colorway of uh the same bag and as far as if i'm gonna get much more than that i'll decide after i get the next one so yeah that's my answer Rian NGC, Vancouver shopper here. How long did you wait after your first quota bag to ask for the next one? So that was the same, basically the same question as Ken Fo. Um, I usually, you know, you can talk about it even whenever you want, right? But the problem is that they have to space it out. As far as I know, they, like my store or in Canada in general, your essay won't be able to allocate you another bag within six months of any bag offer, whether it's a quarter bag or not quarter bag, they can't, they don't really have the ability to allocate you another bag within six months. And if they do, it's usually a quota and then a non quarter bag, not a quota and a quota within the six months period. And so it's almost pointless to start asking too early. Um, so yeah, I feel like by the time I'm at my two to one spend, I'm usually closer to my anniversary already. So that's when I start asking about it. Uh, and it's different every time. Again, like I said, it's can be earlier one year, later another year. It kind of always averages out. 
Also by the same person, need your opinion. My first quarterback is a mini Kelly. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> As for Kelly 25, should my next quarterback be a Bel Birkin 25 or still a Kelly 25? That's a tough one because I always find it hard to decide for someone else. But if it was me and I wanted uh, the Kelly 25 as my first bag, I would just continue asking for the Birkin 20, uh, sorry, Kelly 25, because uh, personally speaking, also I do favor, I do favor a little bit my Kelly 25 more than my Birkin 25. I love both of them, but I do favor the Kelly a bit more. I just think it's more my aesthetic and it's, a forever bag for me like Kelly 25 black and gold is just literally perfection so I I would continue asking for that if that was what you originally wanted and if it was me I would do that um having said that a Bergen 25 is not a bad idea I feel like and that's just my assumption I feel like you'll end up with both anyway so unless you're not like you're not too picky as to the order which one you get first then yeah just throw both options at your essay and see which one comes first because that's also another strategy because whichever comes first is just gonna feel for example right let's say you are keen on just the kelly but then everyone else also is keen on the same kelly that you asked for then you're gonna wait a lot longer because who else who knows what your order is right among your few people that are asking for the same bag however if you have more you're more open to either birkin or kelly then your essay or your boutique among your essays they're able to kind of manage it a little bit better and maybe allocate it earlier for you your bag earlier for you but it really depends on you and at the end of the day it's just what's your priority yeah that's the thing um but if it was me i would probably stick to the same bag that was if it was me dr purse time what bag will be on your next wish list I'm keeping it a secret. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think everyone knows already. I still want another mini Kelly just because the one that I have is gold, which is beautiful, but that's more of a warmer tone. Even though it's quite neutral, I will say gold on gold is really neutral. It's a lot of people's holy grails. I feel like for me, camel color has always been a bit tricky although this gold color right which is the camel tone anyway is pretty much like the like if there's a gold color or if there's a camel color for me that would be the it but still i wear a lot of cool tones my skin tone is also quite neutral leaning towards the cool tone so i feel like having a cool tone same bag would really serve me really really well like my wardrobe how i mix it up sometimes and how i uh color coordinate things um it would really really yeah that's the only one missing so that's the one that i'm focusing on basically um but yeah it's no secret everyone knows um and i i think i i think i get asked this question every time so it's the same answer <laughs> or maybe it was a little different since i was still wanting the constants but then you know that was just me trying to get the constants before i get another of the same bag yeah it, it, technically it's the same like in my head it's still the same bag pool pool seven three four when should you ask for your second quota bag after getting your first we already covered that earlier so just rewatch rewind lux monologue if you can repick a color combo for a broken 25 what would it be and why? Ah, okay. I'm not sure if I would necessarily repick the color because I'm, even though all my bags are black or a lot of them are black, I'm completely happy with that. But having said that, if I were to repick it, I really like Eta. So um, that gray slightly taupe but no it's really more of a gray taupe color with rose gold hardware which i've tried this exact combo uh one of our member subscriber during the meetup wow was it like 
two, three years ago now. Um, she had that exact bag and I tried it and it was lovely. And I feel like that cool tone gray, which is also slightly taupey, was the exact, uh, it's the exact color combo that I'm missing in my collection uh, as far as my Hermes collection goes because um, you know black always works with everything for sure yes but it can still be a little harsh and so I feel like having something slightly lighter but cool tone works so so well with my wardrobe so well so I feel like it would be that Itza and rose gold also from Lux Monologue other than the mini bow lead the Mini Lindy and the Picotin 18. Any other non-quota bags that you are keen to get? Interesting. Yeah, I don't have anything that I'm like really like. Uh, it's kind of weird to say I am sort of at purse piece right now, meaning that every single quota and non-quota bag that I really really want, I have already. Um, just want to add more colorways. So in terms of the type of bags, I don't actually have one that I really, really, really want. Um, having said that, if I could wish for another non-quota bag, um, what's a non-quota bag that's really nice? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm so picky. I'm really, really picky. I, I tried the Gipsier. I didn't like it. Oh, I still haven't really tried the Halzan in the small, like in the 25 size. So I don't know about that one, but I don't feel like I really need it either. Um, I don't really want another Mini Lindy, even though my Mini Lindy is awesome. I really like it a lot. Um, but I don't feel like I need another color or another size of it. The picotin is probably okay. I will say a picotin, another picotin 18, or another mini bolide, <laughs> but different colorways. I guess because both of both of those are black as well. I know it's so crazy that I end up with black bags so much. It's almost like it's meant to be. Anyway, if anything, I would want to add lighter colorways of those two. Um, am I open to a larger bow lead? Because I tried my friend's bow lead 25. I believe it was a 25, yeah. It was so cute. And I like that the bow lead has a slimmer profile, so it really pleases me more than the Alma. Um, in that sense, I like the slimmer profiles, most likely for the mini bow lead, most likely for the picotin because those two bags are so versatile and they're really, really nice in different colorways as well, just because I have black <laughs> and I, there's nothing wrong with black. I love black, but at the same time, it can get boring sometimes and it, black can get harsh uh, sometimes, especially during the summertime. But yeah, that, that would be my answer. Okay, from XXNBA, have you had moments with your Hermes essay that made you think of changing them? With the current essay, not really because, uh, or even my last essay, not really either because with both of these essays, I feel like as long as my essay, any brand, right, any brand, as long as they are respectful, polite and um f not friendly but like I, I as long as they're respectful basically right and they are professional with me and I don't need them to be like cracking jokes or anything as long as they're pleasant to deal with and it doesn't have to be like oh my gosh like like fake pleasant. I don't know if that makes sense. It just has to feel natural, but at the same time, like you feel the mutual respect. Uh, as for me, that's enough because it could be better. Sometimes maybe I feel like I wish my essays were more 
um, like they would volunteer to come forward more, like to suggest more. I don't know, suggest more things and or um, kind of take more initiative to maybe talk about my next wish list instead of me doing that. Like I do sometimes wish for that, um, but it's okay that that's not there because for me, the most important part is that I feel every time I see my essays and I do my shopping, I feel like as long as they treat me well and of course I'm always going to be polite and and like I'll do my best to be the best version of myself with them but as, feel, as far as them recipro reciprocating that I'm okay with the the relationship being just what it is right um, because it could be worse as well so at the same time um, you know I'm kind of aware that d who you get is also a lot to do with a bit of fate and your luck and so I'm not gonna say that my current essays are not good they're not bad at all uh, they're they're good they're good so they're I would say no there are no moments at all where I would ch want to change them the only times I would want to change any essays is if I feel like they really are just stringing me along and really not helpful never able to get me my wish list like that's not the case right now i feel like i've still been able to get what i want i do spend a lot but like i've always been able to get what i want uh not always super fast but it you know it's still within my anniversary usually so it's okay and um that's all I can ask for because I know it could be way worse. I know for sure. Do you think sometimes you overthink about your image journey? Oh yeah, all the time. Actually, this person has a few more questions. I do sometimes overthink my journey, especially during the beginning, I guess my first couple years. Uh, unfortunately, I've had to go through two different essays, actually more than two. <laughs> I technically went through three different essays um, because there were some, I guess, internal stuff, the, the you know, people leaving. Uh, so that was to no fault of mine, but it's hard not to overthink because a lot of it is about the relationship. Even though you do have to spend and you have to reach a certain kind of average that your store is known for, for certain bags. Um, I think the relationship part is kind of the intangible that you don't, you can't really read other people's minds, right? And so it's hard not to overthink. But at the same time, you just, you know, after a while, right? Especially after my first essay and second, well, second briefly, and then third essay, which is my current essay, um, I feel like we are at a good place. And because I've had this essay the longest, I do wish that she would be more proactive sometimes in helping me with different things. Like sometimes I feel like I'm always the one doing the reminding and the what I want and stuff like that instead of them suggesting to me. I sometimes want to hear suggestions too. So that's the only part that it's missing a little bit. Um, but other than that, I, I'm okay with it. But it's, again, like I said, it's hard not to overthink because when you're new to a relationship and you're new in your journey in general, you, it's, it's hard not to think <laughs> even right now I still overthink sometimes but I'm a lot more easygoing in a sense that I I still have expectations but at the same time I'm okay with like accepting uh what's gonna happen like you know let's say whatever I ask next um uh, in terms of wish I still want like I, I know I will get it eventually I don't know when uh, so that's the part where I can't really have an expectation. I don't know when I'm going to get my next quota bag. I don't know um, like what it will be. Those things, it's, it's a little hard to determine. And I'm kind of at peace with the process a little bit more. It's still stressful, but I'm a little bit better at it. I think everyone 
we'll get better at it eventually. And if you can't deal with it anymore, then you'll just want to stop. I think that's, you know, either you continue and you're definitely more patient with it, or you just don't do it anymore. That's basically uh, the end game, I suppose. I completely missed this next question, which is, do you think your new Constance and Mini Kelly are going to compete with each other? And my answer is no, because they are completely different bags. I know they are the same colorway, but I find that these two bags have completely different personality and one is definitely more casual than the other. I guess both of them are good travel bags, but one is definitely way more user-friendly and way more spacious than the other. And also, one looks more petite and more appropriate for nighttime, whereas the other is a little bit more on the casual side. So yeah, I would say no, they don't compete. At least from my point of view, they are different enough. You know, they are sim similar, but they're definitely different enough that I have space for both of these bags in the exact same colorway. Especially now that I've gotten to know the Constance a bit more, I've worn it quite a bit more ever since I got it, I really feel like they're different completely different bags. I'm happy to do a more thorough review in the future. Let me know your exact questions if that's the case, but yeah, for me, they're totally different bags. Also by XSNBA, how do you honestly feel about repeating the same color combo in your collection? Oh yeah, that's a great question. How do I honestly feel? I feel okay with it. That's how, that's my honest opinion. I have not only a lot of black bags from Hermes, I also have a lot of black bags from Chanel. And black, I mean, how many times do I have to say it? It's always a good idea. It can get boring. I'm not gonna lie. It can get boring because sometimes a black bag is definitely very harsh with like a light color outfit or if you just feel like, oh, you want a fresh, kind of like bright color look. Um, you're not gonna get that with black. But at the same time, I'm not mad at it because I'm so much more carefree with black bags. I honestly am. And with the weather that we get here, minus the summertime, so the summertime is the only exception in Vancouver where the weather is amazing, hardly rains in the summer. Uh, but that's only, what, three, two months, three months? The rest of the year, oh my gosh, rain Coover. It rains all the time, literally. Sometimes it rains every day for two weeks. And no joke, you don't get a break in between. So um, it can get pretty depressing. And at the same time, you're always wondering, okay, what bag can I bring out today, right? If it's a white bag or some sort of light color, you're gonna have a harder time protecting it and it's gonna get color stained much easier and it's not gonna be as robust. So black, in that instance, you don't have to worry about it, right? It's not that black doesn't get dirty, but you don't see the dirt on black on black bags usually. So um, that's why I'm okay with it. And that's my honest feeling. I'm totally okay with it. It doesn't mean that I don't wanna add some colors or some brightness. It doesn't necessarily mean bright color like oh, yellow, green, you know, orange, whatever. I don't mind a neutral that is a lighter tone. That's what I need. Uh, I need more of those for sure. Um, but I always don't mind having black first. It's almost like basics. Like when you buy clothes, you need to buy basics before you buy the more intricate designs and stuff like that to add on to your capsule wardrobe. That's how I feel about it. Selena Francisco. Her question is, if you had the chance to restart your age journey, what would you do differently or the same? There were some bad and some great purchases. You guys have already, if not seen some of my worst um, as purchases. It included uh, certain shoes and certain ready to wear. Usually those are my worst ones. Everything else I buy in terms of like scarves, um, even some shoes and ready to wear, uh, a lot of them became my best purchases. I think my best, best, best purchases are definitely the fine jewelry because those are just, I take so, so long to contemplate which piece to add. And I 
you know, once I commit to a piece, I wear it for a long time. Um, although right now there are a few rings that I'm not wearing because I kind of wore them for a while and then now I'm like onto other rings. Uh, but they still were really, really great purchases while I wore them a lot. So what I would do differently is that in terms of ready to wear, is not to be afraid to buy the, the more expensive pieces. That's what I would do differently because at the beginning of my journey, I was concentrating on buying the least expensive pieces such as t-shirts. And even if I bought pants, they were the least expensive pants that you can get. And while they can still be really great purchases, it's just, you know, those can be quite limiting. And that's the reason why I don't buy those anymore. I, I haven't bought a t-shirt in a while and I, haven't really bought like I guess my worst two ready-to-wear purchases are the wool pants and the 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 fleece jacket the, the exercise fleece jacket the design is just locking and there's nothing super special about them other than that they're really expensive and they're from Hermes um, so they're not really adding to my wardrobe right but I did spend money on them because it, you know, it contributed to my bag and it was part of their pre-spend. So it's not for nothing, but at the same time, I don't enjoy those items. And that was the mistake that I did at the beginning is that I, I really focused too much on buying the items that I felt like was more worthy and like more buck for my, uh, more bang for my buck. But it, turned out to backfire because if I had just spent more money on like a nicer pair of pants instead of those ones or another jacket instead of that one uh, even if it was just I don't know like a, those those um, equestrian but like the puffer jacket would, would have cost three times more I know but I would have had more use for that one than that fleece jacket so yeah, because you're going to spend the money anyway. So that's something I would have done differently. My mindset was not the same at the time. So now instead, I focus more on the design. So the price can be a lot more, but I focus really on the design and the shape of the item. Because trust me, I've tried a, a, a great number ready to wear. And the thing is, not only am I picky, but I'm also, you know, I'm also quite like... I'm not stick thin, but I, I have more of a straight body type and I don't uh, I don't have a ton of curves and a lot of their clothes are quite boxy and like just very uh, big, even when you're going a size 34. And that's just, you know, I'm not gonna just spend that amount of money on a cashmere coat when it's, I'm just gonna float inside. But at the same time, they also have clothings that are really, really tight fitting and I'm also not going to spend money on those. Like it has to be not only comfortable, but the style has to really suit my body type. And it's a little harder to choose that way, but you've got to be picky. You've got to really just go for what works for your body type and your aesthetic. Uh, and sometimes it could mean that it costs a lot more than you want. And that's okay because at the end of the day, it does contribute towards your pre-spend because one way or another, you're going to have to spend that money unless you buy pre-loved. So that's something I would do, um, well, continue to do now, now that I've kind of changed my mindset. Um, another thing I would continue to do is just, um, just be as pleasant as I can like I want to be the best version of myself when I shop there if you put yourself in the shoe of your essays or your your store right like they have so many clients that are competing with you if they don't like you <laughs> they're not gonna really want to help you out right so at the end of the day um even if it involves a little bit of you just not acting like I'm not ever acting I'm always gonna try to be the best version of myself but my point is you want to be as nice and as pleasant and professional as you possibly can even if you're the client and you feel like oh you know the client the customer is always king right but it's not always the case with Elmez both sides have to give basically and and so yeah 
it's a mind it's a definitely called a journey for that reason it's a little bit of mind games and it is what it is um because you either buy from the pre-love market which is completely fine too or you buy from your store and that's the kind of banter that you have to kind of manage between you that's how i am on youtube too because i feel like on youtube you know i am a real person <laughs> and i have real feelings and on youtube i never really or at least i try not to show negativity and i don't like i actually really don't i dislike negativity i dislike talking or gossiping about others because there's always two sides of the story and the truth is always with the people involved so it's really really hard for a third person or other people to comment on what's going on because they don't know the whole story and that's the thing i don't i don't condone those uh, behaviors and that's why on my channel i try to stick to my own turf so whatever i share is always just like mm, reviews of my own things and and opinions of what i like dislike whatever usually i don't really talk about what i don't <laughs> don't like unless it's my own things i can be critical of my own things but um and that's my personality i'm kind of non-confrontational i i don't like confrontation and i don't care about confrontation like sometimes it's a lot easier to take a step back instead of letting your ego be at play and just make the problem worse and worse and worse sometimes you gotta be the bigger person and just be the one who's like okay that's it i'm i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna play this game right so i feel like for me it was a matter you know whenever i have new essays or whenever i go shopping or meet new people um those are the kind of people that i click with the most because uh, I can't handle confrontation and I cannot handle people that are too extra and so I think that's what you need to find for yourself too like your personality find someone that clicks with your personality the posting schedule has been a little bit off but I still hope you guys enjoyed it and if you're new to my channel welcome I hope that you're gonna stick around by clicking that subscribe button I've really been struggling at this like 30 something thousand subscriber and it hasn't moved at all in the last what year or two it's kind of crazy so i hope you guys are gonna click on that subscribe button especially because i know that a lot of people watch this channel but don't subscribe like the can't remember the percentage was very very low so anyway i hope you guys um have a great week ahead of you and i'll talk to you guys next week bye